Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, I've owned chinchillas for quite some time now, and I understand the pain of trying to find the correct information on their care, because let me tell you, there is so much false information out there. But don't worry, I've got your back. By the end of this video, you will know everything you need to know before getting a chinchilla. So let's get started. The first thing I want to start off with is one of the biggest considerations you're going to need for a chinchilla, and that is their cage. Chinchillas require a very large cage, considering their size. The minimum requirement for a chinchilla cage is 3 feet long, 2 feet deep, and 2 feet tall. This will fit a pair of chinchillas comfortably, but I always recommend more space per chinchilla. For example, my pair of chinchillas that I have is in a double ferret nation cage, which is actually twice the minimum. Chinchillas require a multi-level cage with adequate floor space. They like to climb, but they're also very high energy and like to run around as well. So you're gonna want a cage that has height and you wanna fill the cage with accessories that encourage running, climbing, and hiding. So let's talk about all of the accessories you can put in your cage. First off, any accessories you put in your cage must be wood, metal, ceramic, glass, stone. Anything that is plastic must be covered with a no-pill fleece. The reason for this is if your chinchilla chews on plastic and consumes it, it can cause impaction. The same thing if you use a different fabric other than no-pill fleece. The no-pill fleece doesn't have those fibers or threads that can cause also impaction in chinchillas. So there are a few basic items that are required for a chinchilla. And then there are a couple optional items you can add in the cage as well. So first let's start off with the required items. The required items are a food dish, a water bottle, a hut or place to hide, a bunch of shells to encourage climbing, chew toys to trim down their teeth, and then a floor pan and of course bedding and food. So let me go over each item individually. First, your food bowl must be ceramic, glass, or stainless steel. Again, you don't want to add plastic because it can make them sick if consumed. And also you don't want it to be wood because it won't be sanitary. Next, you want to have a glass water bottle. You do not want to have plastic unless you have a metal guard that prevents the chinchilla from chewing on it because they will get to the bottle even if it's attached to the outside of their cage. They will get to anything. So for huts, you want a hut per chinchilla. For this, you want to make sure you give each chinchilla their own place to hide so they aren't forced to share a space. This can cause fights, but if you allow them to have their own territory, their own space, this could alleviate that tension. You're going to want a plethora of shelves. There's quite a few different types of shelves. So you can get wooden shelves. They make a lava ledge that is made out of pumice stone. You can buy metal shelves. There's a whole bunch of things that you can use. You can also use plastic shelves like the Ferret Nation and Critter Nation come with a plastic shelf. Just make sure that you cover it with a no-pill fleece. So those are the shelves that you can add. You can also make your own shelves. It's quite easy. You just need to make sure you have the safe wood and you can buy hanger bolts and screw them into the side and use like wing nuts and um, a big washer to attach to the cage. It's quite easy to do. Um, in the next video, in one of my next videos, I will show you exactly how to make shelves. Another thing with the shelves, you wanna have enough and for them to be big enough. So if there is a fall, if they miss a shelf, they will be caught by another one. You don't want any big holes in your cage where there isn't other accessories. The next thing you want in your cage are chew toys. So this can include wooden chew toys or like a pumice chew toy. These are going to trim down your chinchilla's teeth. Like a lot of rodents, chinchilla's teeth are always growing. So it is beneficial for you to have either wooden shelves chew toys, things that are going to encourage your chinchilla to trim down their own teeth. The next item will usually come with your cage. It is the floor pan, but you wanna make sure that it is going to be the best option for whatever bedding you want to use. So in my case, my Ferret Nation cage comes with these plastic floor pans, which are great if you wanna use fleece. So they make these fleece liners that cover these plastic 
floor pans as like a pillowcase, but I prefer to use the wooden shavings because it lasts longer. So I bought these metal pans that have a higher wall that is perfect for the amount of bedding that I need to put in the cage. These floor pans, I will link in the description below, but they are made by a company called Bass, and this company specifically makes it for this cage. So you can get them for the bottom, you can also get them for that extra shelf that comes in the cage as well. So now that we've gone over the required items, there are quite a few items that are optional that you can add into your cage as well. Those items are a hay feeder, a litter dish, fleece hammocks, a wheel or flying saucer, a chinchiller, or even a play pen. So let's go over each item individually with more detail. A lot of chinchilla owners like to use hay feeders because it keeps the hay clean, but there are a lot of unsafe hay feeders. For example, this one is probably one of the most dangerous and the most common that I've seen. These wire ball hay feeders are dangerous because a chinchilla can stick their head into the hay feeder and become stuck. This can cause injury to your chinchilla, so avoid these at all costs. There are also going to be other hay feeders that are just as unsafe. So if you have anything that has metal bars or small holes that you believe your chinchilla can stick their head through, or even if they can chew their way into the hay feeder, it can be considered unsafe and you should not use it. There is no requirement to use a hay feeder. If you feel uncomfortable doing so, you can place this on the ground. It will be fine. Just make sure that you are providing your chinchilla with clean hay on a daily basis. The next optional item is a litter box. You can train a chinchilla to pee in a box. Obviously you can't train them to poop in a box. They don't have control over that. They will poop wherever they want. But you can train them to go in a litter box. I put air quotes on that because they're gonna do what they wanna do, but a lot of times if you put a different kind of bedding in the litter dish and put it in the corner that they pee in, they will go into the litter dish. Now my favorite litter dish that I use is actually a Pyrex glass baking dish. This is perfect size, they can't chew it. It's perfect and it's not super expensive or fancy. You can get those. There's a whole bunch that are made for like corners and whatnot. Just make sure that it's not plastic. It can be a metal or the glass. You can add more enrichment items like fleece hammocks into your cage as well. These are actually super easy to make. You can also find a lot of these on Etsy. A lot of people make them because they're quite simple to make. Just make sure that they are a no-pill fleece. They make hammocks for ferrets as well as chinchillas, and the ferret hammocks aren't always made of no-pill fleece, which again can be dangerous if your chinchilla starts to consume them. And if your chinchilla starts to consume a fleece hammock, make sure that you take it out of the cage, because again, it's not really a good idea to have them eating fleece regardless. The next item is a wheel or flying saucer. Chinchillas require a wheel that is at least 15 inches in diameter. So all of those wheels that they sell at a pet store are unsafe, especially because they are also plastic. Your wheel should be either metal or wood, and it should be big enough for them to run on. If you use one of those smaller wheels, it puts pressure on their spine, which in the long run can cause issues for your chinchilla. You also want to make sure that it has a solid bottom. You don't want to have one of those wire wheels like this because your chinchilla's toes can actually get stuck in those bars, which again can cause injury. Also, you want where they're running to be about four inches. If you do decide to put a wheel in your cage, I want you to be very cautious when you do so. A lot of breeders actually recommend to not have a wheel or flying saucer in your cage. And the reason for this is that chinchillas actually are very susceptible to having heat stroke. So a lot of times they will not only get obsessed with running on the wheel to the point where they will lose weight from running on it so much, but also if they're in a warmer environment, running on a wheel can exasperate a heat stroke. So when you are putting a wheel in a chinchilla cage, make sure that they are in a cool environment and they aren't consistently running on the wheel. A lot of chinchilla owners actually have a playpen. 
So this is a place where your chinchilla can roam around on the floor. A lot of people usually put accessories that they can hide and run through. My favorite playpen is this plastic one, but make sure your chinchillas don't chew on it. But it's super cheap, it's easy to make bigger or taller, but make sure if you do decide to get a playpen that you are supervising your chinchilla at all times. No matter how tall you make that playpen, they will find a way to get out of it. Not only that, you want to make sure they're not chewing on anything they shouldn't. The last item is a chinchilla. So this is an item that's going to help with cooling them down. I believe a chinchilla is a marble stone, but a lot of people actually use granite. But basically what they are for is to cool down your chinchilla. So if they sit on it, it's a nice cool surface and it will help them regulate their body temperature better. So since we're talking about chinchillas having heat stroke, let's move on to temperature. Chinchillas must be in an environment that is lower than 72 degrees. It can be 72 or lower. If you like your house hot or if you do not have air conditioning, a chinchilla is not the pet for you. Chinchillas are very susceptible to heat stroke, mostly because they have super dense fur. It's like having a winter coat on that you can never take off. So if they're in an environment where it is over 72 degrees, they are very susceptible to becoming sick. Their temperature requirements actually correlate to when they are most active as well. You see chinchillas are crepuscular, which means they are most active at dawn and dusk when it is most cool. So if you are deciding to have a chinchilla in your room at night, they may keep you awake because they're going to be awake at night. So I would suggest if you're a light sleeper, that you're going to want to keep your chinchilla in a different room. Let's move on to our next topic, social requirements. Chinchillas are actually a very social species and they thrive in pairs. In the wild, they can be seen in the hundreds. However, domestic chinchillas are evolving to the point where they are comfortable living alone. So unlike a guinea pig or rats, chinchillas are happy and thrive being alone. So don't worry about my chinchilla is alone and I need to get another one. Chinchillas will thrive by themselves and the bonding process can be quite difficult. But if you need tips on that, please check out this video where I talk about all of the factors that go into bonding. However, if you do decide to keep your chinchilla alone, make sure you are giving it social interaction daily. That means playing with them, interacting with them in their cage, make sure they have some sort of social interaction with you. So let's move on to diet. A chinchilla's diet, there's a lot that goes into it, so I'm going to separate this into specific sections and talk in detail about each one. So let's start with their pellet formula. Chinchillas require pellets and hay. So for the pellets, you wanna make sure that you are buying a pellet that does not have any seeds, nuts, corn, any extras. You want it to be specifically all pellets. There are two brands that I would recommend. It's Oxbow Essentials in the Red Bag and the Missouri Chinchilla Diet. Now with the Oxbow one, make sure it is in the red bag because they have other pellet formulas that are not safe for chinchillas. Just the red bag. Now a chinchilla's diet should primarily consist of Timothy hay. But I personally like to add orchard grass hay to add variety. But again, primarily they should have Timothy hay. So what I personally do is I give them two thirds Timothy hay and one third orchard grass hay to give them a variety in their diet. Chinchillas can also have alfalfa, but I would give this with caution. This is typically reserved for pregnant females or growing babies. Though some chinchilla owners like to give a pinch as a treat but I would give this with caution because there's such a high calcium level that it can cause bladder stones in chinchillas. I have found that a lot of chinchillas refuse to eat the pet store brands of hay. So what I like to do is I like to feed hay from small pet select. Their hay is a lot fresher, which encourages your chinchilla to eat. Now they have a lot of varieties, so let me walk you through exactly what I get. So I usually get the second cutting Timothy hay in a 10 pound box and then I get the orchard hay also in a 10 pound box. Next let's talk about water intake. Now chinchillas should have a glass water bottle instead of a water dish. 
If you use a dish, you put your chinchilla at risk to getting wet. You should avoid your chinchilla getting wet as much as you can because they will have problems drying, which inevitably will cause fungal issues that could be very dangerous for your chinchilla. Now you also want to avoid giving your chinchillas tap water. Tap water has a high content of fluoride, which can actually dehydrate your chinchilla, which defeats the purpose of water. The type of water you want to give your chinchilla is reverse osmosis or RO water or a spring water. So you will find this typically in water bottles at your local grocery store. However, you want to avoid the distilled water. When they distill water, they take all the beneficial minerals out of the water, which again defeats the purpose of water. So the two options are RO water, which you can find in purified water bottles, or you can use spring water. Let's move on to treats. There is so much false information about what treats you can give your chinchilla. For example, chinchillas cannot have any fresh fruits or vegetables, period. This includes dried fruits or vegetables. So for example, a raisin is a very common misconception for a treat for a chinchilla. Chinchillas cannot process the sugar in raisins, so you should avoid raisins at all costs. Now I have a list of safe treats. So here are a couple safe treat options. One plain Cheerio, so given moderation. Plain shredded wheat, again, moderation. Rolled oats, moderation. Rose petals, apple sticks, rose hips. But make sure you are trying to find safe treat options. Or also you can avoid treat options altogether. They do not need treats. Treats are usually just for us to feel good in giving them something. They don't need it. Now comment below your favorite treat option that you give your chinchillas. My favorite is the plain Cheerios and it's because they look like they're driving little tiny cars with their little tiny steering wheels. It's so cute. Let's move on to bedding. With bedding there are safe options and unsafe options. So first, let's start off with the safe options. Those options are either pine or aspen wood chips, no pill fleece liners, or a treated stone tile. Now there are quite a few unsafe bedding options. The first one is cedar wood chips. Now cedar wood chips have an oil that is very toxic to chinchillas, so it should be avoided altogether. The next one is a paper-based bedding, like Carefresh or Katie. A lot of chinchilla owners will actually suggest that you use this, but it is very unsafe because it can expand in your chinchilla's stomach and cause impaction. The next is a cloth or cotton bedding. Again, I explained this earlier, where the fibers in a cotton can cause problems if your chinchilla accidentally ingests them. And lastly is plastic. You can use plastic, but make sure it is covered with a fleece cover. So let's start off with pine and aspen wood chips. So this is what I use specifically because you can go the longest without changing the bedding. So with pine and aspen wood chips, you want to change out the entire bedding each week. But you also want to spot clean and remove the pea spots during the week. I personally recommend the aspen over the pine because the density of the aspen allows for it to stay in the cage instead of flying out all over around your cage. But a lot of people prefer pine over aspen because it is also cheaper. So let's move on to a treated stone tile. So the benefit of using tile is that it is easy to sweep all the poop up but you want to make sure that you have a treated tile in case your chinchilla has accidents on the tile. So this will make it easy to wipe off the pee instead of it becoming saturated in the stone. So when you use a stone tile bedding, this is something that needs to be sweeped and cleaned daily. I would also recommend that your chinchilla be potty trained and you have a litter pan in the cage when you are using tile. So then they'll be more enticed to using the litter box instead of peeing on the tile. Now the biggest benefit of using tile is that it is cooler so it will help regulate the temperature of your chinchilla. The last safe option are fleece liners. So again, this is most convenient with a chinchilla that is potty trained. 
So you want to have a litter box somewhere in the cage to encourage them to pee somewhere other than the fleece liners. Now, if they do decide to pee on the fleece liners, it's not the end of the world, but it will start to smell. So with the fleece liners, you want to make sure that you change and machine wash them at least every three days, if not more. So if you use this method, make sure that you have multiple liners so that you can have one in the cage and in the wash. Last but not least is grooming. Now, this is my favorite topic to talk about because it's so dang cute. Now, like I said earlier, chinchillas cannot get wet. So they must take dust baths to remove the oils from their fur. So it's basically like using a dry shampoo on your chinchilla. So there are a few types of dust that I recommend. They will be down below. Just make sure that you are not using anything that is actual sand. Um, a lot of people also think that they can use cat litter. That is absolutely do not use cat litter or sand, right? They have specific dust for chinchillas that they will use. Now, when you put the dust in their cage, they will roll in it and clean themselves and it's absolutely adorable, but it's not for everyone. If you are a very clean person that does not want to deal with dust everywhere and fur everywhere, chinchillas may not be the right animal for you because when they roll in dust, their fur and the dust just blows into the sky and there's not really anything you can do except for excessively cleaning. So with dust baths, there are two other items you're going to need. You're going to need dust, and something to put the dust in, so a bath house. So a lot of pet stores actually sell bath houses for chinchillas, but I would actually suggest against those just because your chinchilla will most definitely grow out of them. There are a couple options that you can use for dust baths. You can use a Tupperware bin, you can use a ceramic dish, you can even use a, an aquarium bowl. However, you can also make it out of wood. They also have Etsy artists that create dust baths, so you can purchase one there. But I also enjoy the dust baths that they use for birds. They're quite a bit bigger than a chinchilla dust bath, but they still have that plastic dome shape. So when you are doing this, make sure you're supervising so they aren't chewing on it, but this is another option you can use as well. So you're going to want to cover the base of whatever bathhouse you have, and then you want to either put it in their playpen or in their cage for about 10 to 15 minutes so that they can roll in it and cover themselves completely. And then you want to remove it from their cage or playpen. And the reason for this is if they over bathe, it can cause their skin to become dry and start cracking. So you want to avoid overdoing it with the dust bath. Although you do want to provide a dust bath at least three to four times a week. However, if you do see that your chinchilla has dry skin or cracking, you're going to want to lessen the amount of times a week that you bathe your chinchilla. Now, did I lose anyone? Well, lucky for you, I created a chinchilla care sheet that is jam-packed with checklists, item recommendation, and the care requirements that we just went over. Didn't I say I had your back? Just make sure to download it in the link in the description below. At this point, you should have all the basic knowledge of owning a chinchilla, but in my next video, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of owning a chinchilla. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you get notified the next time I post. And if you know anyone that is struggling to find proper care for their chinchilla, make sure you share this video with them. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.